Good evening and welcome to this uh, Dialogues in Development event organized jointly by Development Planning Unit and IAED. Uh, this evening we're going to be talking about financing grassroots development at scale. Uh, our main presenter this evening is Sunsuk Bunyavancha. She's been developing innovative support mechanisms for grassroots driven development and slum upgrading at scale for more than 30 years. In the 1980s, she developed the concept of land sharing through which squatter communities in Bangkok negotiated with the owner of the land they occupied to divide the site between them. In squatter communities, uh, they got land tenure on part of the site in exchange for returning the other part of the site to the landowner. In 1998, she founded the Asian Coalition for Housing Rights with a number of Asian NGOs, and this group has been very active in fighting eviction and in promoting progressive housing policies that work for low-income groups. She also saw the need for a government agency in Thailand that was able to support and work with grassroots organizations. In 1992, she established the Urban Community Development Office with the Thai government, this supported many urban community development activities and provided low interest loans to community organizations that helped pay for emergencies, housing, and income generation. The success of the UCDO led her to the appointment as the head of the Community Organizations Development Institute, a national government agency. Here she developed the Ban Mong Kong program, the Secure Tenure Program, which funded and supported grassroots organizations in informal settlements to design and to manage their own upgrading programs and to negotiate for land tenure. This has proved to be one of the largest and most successful slum upgrading programs in Asia, and its work continues today in over 200 cities. After the Indian Ocean tsunami, she supported disaster-affected communities to take the lead in rebuilding their lives, homes, and livelihoods and not so be bypassed or sidelined by the many external aid agencies. And in 2009, she launched the Asian Coalition for Community Action, which is the focus of her talk today. Uh, certain themes have been consistent in her innovations. Perhaps the central one is a strong belief in the power and capacity of low-income groups, especially their collective capacity, if given the opportunity to use it. She has seen just how much this collective capacity can achieve. She has always promoted decision making at the community level, which also means finance accessible at community level and used for what communities prioritize. She has seen going to scale as achieved by a multiplication of community initiatives rather than an expansion of one initiative. And she constantly decentralizes decisions to communities and community networks. She has also always seen a need to catalyze actions that reach city-wide level, involving all poor communities. So this evening we're going to have a presentation by uh, Sumsuk, followed by a question and dialogue um, that will be started off by uh, Karen Levy and David Satterthwaite. Uh, for those of you who don't know, um, Karen, Karen Levy and David Satterthwaite are both uh, strong supporters of community-led development through all the work they've been doing um, in their work. Um, Karen is the former director of the DPU and David Satterthwaite is a senior fellow at uh, IAED. So thank you. I'll leave the floor uh, to some... <coughs> Friends, uh, Karen, David, Cassidy, thanks very much for the introduction, which is done very well. I would never uh, introduce as good as she has done. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Forgot me of the thing. So this evening, uh, I, I think it's such a, a great honor to be able to share with you the experience uh, in which I have been doing for more than 30 years. Uh, the uh, the talk and the slide may not be able to tell you everything because there are lots of content, there are lots of details in all the things that has been uh, happening. Uh, that, that has been developed. Okay, so it's uh, a great opportunity to share with you here today in a country which is 
a great country where many of the development and housing theories are legitimate. <laughs> yeah. So today is a challenge to share with you another development direction, yeah, which we try to challenge the conventional development uh, theory that the world has changed. The world has changed. We need to come up with new way to develop the people-led process, not the conventional, professional-driven, government-driven, vertical development direction. Yeah. Now it's the stage of people. So how we can multiply the possibility and let the people lead the way as much as possible. So I share with you how we decided and how it worked. Before I go to the presentation, I think I would like just to give a, a tribute to three persons who inspire me and who actually there are so many friends and teachers. But I just, in this meeting, want to name three of them. First is Kun Pai Boon Watanasiri Tham, who just passed away this year, and he is the economist who, who has a, a, a great impact in building the Kodi and trying to design the finance system that could be carried out and developed by the people and to link it into a community fund. He, 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 is the, he was sorry, the architect of finance and uh, worked with me in, in all this process. Jo Kim is the president of uh, Slum Developer Federation who taught me what community saving is about and how network, Manila, Milan, and so on. What we develop in Asia is not exactly the same as uh, Czech Developer International. Same principle, same concept, same belief, but a different, a little, slightly different system which you would know later on. And, and, and last but not least, the grassroots people who give me a lot of energy and inspiration of going forward because people always the solution of whatever problems. Yeah. To start, I would say the problems of the development today is the system of supply driven. Yeah. The actor, the, the government, the people who have resource decide the game and people are the recipient, have to wait, have to follow, yeah? And this, the dynamic of change is so fast that the supply driven cannot adjust themselves to open up sufficient space for the people, for the growing problem in the people, yeah? So what we have to look at maybe to look more into the demand side. Look at people who suffer, look at people who are poor, look at the real scale, and see what could be a process from this scale up, and how we could support such a movement from the demand side, from their way of doing things, and in their scale. Today, if you go to any planning organization or government, they will say, oh, because we have this budget, and then we have uh, this plan, so we're going to do two projects, right? So the number and the way determined by the people who have money. It, it's not related to any scale. And that pick may not multiply also. After two years, they finish and they leave the project somewhere, down it somewhere, and they start a new thing. So people are becoming the experimental object of development agency all the time. So the structural problem, the big scale of problem will never be being solved. So the, 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 key, the key subject, the key idea is how we look at the people and they are the ones who make change in scale, in the real scale. So what are the process and methodology, system, tools, space, that we have to support to make it possible. Otherwise, we cannot keep up with the number of slum which is emerging and poverty which is expanding. Yeah? 
The way to change now is not really easy because I have to leave it. The way to change is how we find a way that is more demand driven, where poor people become an actor. If poor people become an actor, it means the scale of problem can become the scale of solution by itself. Yeah? The demand are the scale. Huh? So if the demand side are active and moving in the direction of solution, so it means you address the solution at scale in itself. Yeah? The second is how we will find a new way which is more horizontal than vertical. If we link the people together, the people link with the other actor and they keep moving, horizontal has no limit. But vertical has a lot of limit, up to the line of vertical. Yeah. Sorry, many people here must be students. I hope our students <laughs> can understand this, a little complex uh, development. I will tell you afterwards. So you, you change this position from invisible minority to visible majority. <coughs> and then we make finance. The finance system today is designed by the formal and the market system. We have to make the finance work. And there is a, an active flow of finance in the community. <coughs> so they reach the finance and they use the finance to determine what kind of development they want. If we don't have finance, it means people have to dance with other people finance. You have to be determined by other development direction all the time. Now, if people start having finance and their finance is working, linking family, linking community fund, and linking with other fund, they can start develop whatever, whatever they uh, feel it is important, yeah? including housing. And that is the key subject of the talk today. Yeah? Then the last thing is that it's not only happy to solve the problem one after one, but how to build partnership, how to change the political relationship. When we say poor people, it doesn't mean economically poor only. They're poor according to many things. Political power, you are poor. Your rights are poor. Your capacity are poor. Yeah? Knowledge of the outside world are poor, but inside they are richer than others anyway. So if we, we have to change, we have to change this political relationship, we have to build new relations with the other actors, including the local authority. So sorry, start with a little theory of this change. Now, if this is the, the direction, number one, we have to look at people with the new eyes. Look at the poor people more correctly that people are the answer, people are not the problem. This is the solution, my goodness. This is big number of solutions here. There are, you see all the slums everywhere. People came to the city without anything. Illegal, no money, no connection, uh, no job. But they sneak into slum somewhere. Little by little, they find jobs and have children. They send their children to school. They, they can make their house improve. They get infrastructures and so on. These are the actors who could do things out of nothing. So these are the solutions. And what this group of people are doing things? How they organizing? What is their system of finance? What is the politics among them? how they relate themselves into the other system. This is the new subject of understanding. If we understand this aspect properly, more correctly, we are linking into the solution, huge solution, which is poor people themselves. Yeah? Let the poor at full scale become active actor. This I mentioned before which means these poor need to go into the information at full scale work together as an organized group, link as a network, develop their system of finance, make their finance work, link their finance with a bigger finance, learning, sharing, seeing what are possible. Make this move 
make it a dynamic process, not a passive, static process. And then moving forward, moving forward, don't wait, try it, do it, start making change from the concrete action. <coughs> well, people learn things by concrete action, not from preaching. Yeah? They're sick of preaching because people always preach them and, and regard them as the people who don't know things. You know? So concrete action to, to what's real change would give them a lot of power. The first, the first stage always the information on the scale and the situation of the urban poor and the citywide from the citywide survey. Let the poor survey. The survey is not only get into the number of how many such and such, but it is also the way that when you come from this community, you survey community A, community B. Ah, their situation are different. Why this community have water, why the other one don't have water? Why this one have very high density, why the other one don't have very high density? So it's the way to start learning this difference and the way they make contact, knowing each other. And once all this survey can bring them together into the full scale of the process, they, they have some idea already what are the difference and how they should go forward. Then followed by saving. Saving is the way to make finance work. From community saving, put together, pull together into community fund. Here we said, develop active community finance, saving people, saving money, saving group managerial capacity, and build community finance system for long-term housing development. Development of finance in the community is one of the key things. Our capitalist system that we developed for so many years are enjoying the financial system of the upper layer. They take the benefit from the poor, poorer layer up. So the poor don't have resource. You don't have resource, you're poor, you cannot think, you don't know what to do because there is no resource for development. Now, every time the resource for development comes from somewhere, we always determine that they should behave accordingly, this and that. No? Now, if people have resource and they can start sit together, decide together, what they should do is something like you bring the blood into the organs which is dying. No? It will start have the, the strength and power. Finance is function like that, and not microcredit only. Many of the microcredit is just a stretch of the, uh, the middle class learning system to the poor. And you give it individually. Here we are talking about collective process in which people can come together and work together and start determining what they want because they now have the power to decide what they want as a group by themselves. And then people can start seeing what are the change, what are possible change in our community. In Asia, we develop a lot the architects, community architect process. Community architects, it's very important because architects can help visualize this transformation from the existing slum situation into a new possibility. And if people are the actors, people are the ones who involve in the process, they will understand what they really want and how they translate their way of living into a new possibility. So you can see many of the women are making the plan and the layout. Sometimes when we say a plot of uh, three by seven, in reality, community are not understanding. Yeah? They have to touch it. In many cases, sometimes we have to, to make a plot in the middle of the room or somewhere, something like that, and make the real uh, uh, model so they understand what three meters mean. Yeah? So this is the way in which community can become architect and planner huh? by, by, by touching it, by uh, working on that in three dimensions. Yeah? And this is a little bit distorted, but it's always very useful <laughs> when we develop the 
uh, canal settlement, canal upgrading, nobody participate very well. So some group participate, then we have the architects who draw the picture. Oh, it's going to be this beautiful, you know, with perspectives and so on. And then the people start feeling, oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> we want that. <laughs> but it, the reality is not exactly this beautiful, no? But 80% anyway. But it is okay, you, you have to, to move the people from their very rigid and static spot into a possible thinking of what are other possible alternatives supposed to be. Yeah? Moving people is not only, uh, is not something very easy, no? but, but planning has a very powerful way to change the mindset and to help the poor people to have more vision of the new possibilities. Okay, my presentation will show you two examples. And it's not going to be a lot, both of them, unfortunately, because we are too greedy to show you two things. One is the process in Thailand, which is implemented by Kodi. We should be able to institutionalize the process into a national organization under the Ministry of Social Development and Human Security. But the way we operate is very much similar to the, the NGO, or even more than the NGO, to let the people do the things at, as much as possible. So this organization is biased towards people. I would think that this is the kind of new institution that we should have in every country, and more institu institution like this, to allow people to be the key actor. And you pass the fund, the plan, or whatever, let them do it. <laughs> Let them link together as a network, let them sit together with the local authority, and you back them up, whatever. If people know that they have this backup, they will be very confident. They will go, they will march on, they will go forward. Yeah? So the function of CODI as the institution in Thailand is like that. Fortunately, we are able to sell the Banman Kong project to the government, and they pass the fund to us. So we are able to develop the citywide credit now must cover about 300 cities, about 100,000 families. Yeah. The way the CODI operate is something like this diagram. That CODI pass the, the grant or the fund to the community organization. And it's allow the community organization to develop their system. Yeah. In, in this uh, picture, is the housing project, which means community already have a plan and already negotiate for the land. So they develop, they take the money, the loan, and they repair for whatever construction. And within the community, they have the subgroup. And for the Barman Co., which unfortunately, the meaning of housing development today is only thinking of houses, how much affordability, yeah? and how people will repair, how to collect, how to maintain, and finish. No. Housing is, should be looked at as a system in which people are living together. We are sharing our life together. What is the social structure here? What is the economic structure here? What is the environment structure here? What are the welfare in which we would help each other more concretely? What could be a foundation in which we build a the culture of the group to whatever activities. It's more than physical, material houses. Yeah? So in this way, if we able to use the housing process to redesign the social structure yeah, of the community, urban community, which now we don't have anywhere in Asia. I'm not so sure here you still have it or not. But in the new urban development, social structure is not one of them. <clears throat> it's only economic infrastructure, cleaning a little bit, but not so clean anyway. <laughs> but social structure of people who live together in the city is what? You can't define that. Yeah. Why don't we use all the housing project to decide this uh, social structure of the people to whatever system, you have to take care of each other, you have to collect the money, you, whatever, and the, the physical design, let me send that, yeah. So this is some of the picture about the Bangkok upgrading, which you probably have seen it. 
in, in many of the documents, you can see the left hand side is the former slum, and the right hand side is the reblocking, in which people in the same slum have moved into the plot, and there are some of the people who stay in the spotted outside joining this. And you can have a plot from 40 square meter to 100 square meter up to the different affordability. Yeah. And I always tell people, you see on the left hand side is the slum. And we always think that people are bad, must be very stupid. And you know, all the very really bad uh, the meaning of slums, it's, it's made from this. And that is oh, not so bad. That's not so bad. They, they are the same people. But the point is that it's the same group of people. <laughs> it's the same group of people. It's changed. People from this group change to that group. <coughs> they can change it. No problem at all from very bad slum into the same people. So it's not the people who are slum. And I tell every time that it is the system which is a slum. Because you don't offer this resource to the people, you don't know how to intervene, you don't know how to start the possibility of the, this development, so you condemn them as a slum. Bad, illegal, immoral, you know? And we don't have ability to do anything, you know? Suddenly you have a class of people because of your default, because the system don't know how to deal with that. And that is a problem, yeah? But it, in fact, they're completely okay and no problem. And actually, they borrow the money to buy the land and they repay it properly. This, this community already repaid for 100%. Okay? What's the problem? No problem. <coughs> it's the system who have problem and never learn. Yeah? And we pass the brain to the community, the poor, all the time. So we criminalize the good people by the inability of the system and the people involved in it. So we are professional. We have to look at this in a new eyes, yeah? That this is, the people are not a problem. People can be a solution, but how we can fix it? This is another community where they review the former slum and make it into a two-story housing. Same group of people, same density, yeah? with uh, the rental arrangement for the former still uh, former residents as well. You can see like the resettlement, some of the resettlement project. Some case people may have to move, but people themselves in the same uh, city-wide survey, they also survey for the land. So they find a lot of possible pockets of land here and there and they start negotiating for that land. And some of the land is a possible land, although without infrastructure. So they start, uh, some people can move to this new land, some people can stay in the, the old one, some people can stay with the government land, which, which is a lease and not so secure, some people can stay in a more secure land. But it is a collective uh, ownership no? in, the, in the earlier stage. This is the canal settlement where people rebuild the squatter along the canal, move them up, and start uh, building houses. And the important thing is not only building houses, also the, uh, the protection of the canal they live in. Yeah? We always have a, a misunderstanding that the local authority can take care of too many things. But people who live along the canal can take care of the canal, and they have done that all the time. So we boost them into a mechanism of caretaker to the environment they are living with. And the children can also learn how to, uh, how to, to have more concern and ability to take care of the environment. Environment is everywhere. If local authorities just let people to do it more, then this uh, could be the way. Yeah? <coughs> And then it's on building the network partnership with the city and broader alliance. When people, this is the explanation, how you change from minority to visible majority. When we survey all the pockets of slums and so on, you link them into a network. A network start helping each other, sharing each other, 
and also sitting with the local authority. Now the local authority will feel very difficult to reject anything because it comes from the network and the network link so many slums in the city. It's a lot of water. Huh? So you go as a network, you go as a combined group, you're not going alone as a single person or a single community. So in this way, the minority has been changed into a majority. And you can negotiate whatever necessary. In, in most of the process, when we pass the fund and let the community do it, community will find a way how to save the money as much as possible. So many of them would have a survey on who are the carpenters, who are the construction workers, and they draw these people into an active construction force. And they're able to lower the price. We make a study and found that if people construct the house by themselves, the price of the house compared to the contractor house will be about half, half the price. This is so important because with the social system, which they organize, they use their own labor, they check the building material price, they try to negotiate together, this and that. Put together, it costs half price, okay? So the social cost, if it's strong, it can reduce the econo economic cost to a half. Yeah. Which means the affordability of the people to pay for that proper housing is not 100%, you can reduce to 50%. Okay, that is the Thai model, sorry. I just go do a lot of explanation. <laughs> now I'm going to Asia. Yeah. What you have seen before was the experience from Thailand, which I have involved in that, and now it's going okay, although I'm out, and people must be happy you are out, <laughs> so they have a good <laughs> new way of doing. Yeah. Okay, no problem. From, Thai, from Thailand, now we are changing Asia. We're changing Asia, why? Because it is a fact that people have changed. If it's work in Thailand, it means it's work anywhere. Huh? The citywide, the survey, the finance, and let people do it. And let the people be the actors. So we're able to raise fund, some good fund funding and we make the program of ACCA, Asian Coalition for Community Action. You can read the present ENU, which explains all the detail of the ACCA program, uh, I mean, in details in all, 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 all the aspects. This, these are the country that implement ACCA. Actually, it's not every city, we, we have more city add to that. In three years, yeah, I tell you, this is, the work in three years. In three years, citywide upgrading in 19 countries from Afghanistan to Mongolia and Fiji. 165 cities. Start from survey and to start the small upgrading project and the big project and the city fund, yeah? Which means the world is really changed. I hope, I hope you really believe me from this talk this evening. Because it's really changed. People are changing. Society are changing. Only the development model are not changing. Yeah. <laughs> now if we capture this change, and then we go with that, the, the change, and create the tools and the process and the system to allow the strength of the people on the ground and the city and so on to move in the right direction, development is not going to be very difficult. Yeah. We become participant. We are not the one who determine how they have to move, you know. In this ACCA program from 2009 to 2012, actually it's in 2011, but we keep on extending the time anyway. At, at first we plan for 150 cities, and we think that this whole set of things can go together, which means community saving and fund building the system of finance of the people, citywide survey, they get all the information in the city, then start the upgrading at the city scale. Yeah? Select five, six, seven by the people together. And then they have the network, they build partnership. Here we don't have the big project. Start the first housing project, yeah? And study how the situation is about. 
at the end of that, we, in which it allowed suddenly the people the space to interact, to produce, to propose, and to start moving forward. Instead of you waiting for somebody to do something for you, you start doing things and you start the next step. Yeah? To get into the land and to permanent citizenship and so on and many other things. These are also the, the picture of many of the small projects. Anything, you know, if we are development agency, we always start by saying that where we should have the budget for what are the important things for the people. It must be sanitation. It must be what, water. It must be such and such. And then we start itemize yeah, certain things. Yeah? And then we go a little more detail. If we go, the people are going to implement sanitation, what they should do. Yeah? How much? How, how to judge, you know, we, we, we determine what's supposed to be done, this and that, you know. Why we spend too much time, too much headache for that? You know, it's like $3,000, okay? <laughs> and it's not a lot of money. Let community say, <coughs> we have $3,000, what are you going to do? What are your problems? What are the things you want to fix? How are you going to fix it? Who would do what, you know? Suddenly, people have the freedom to think, to start, and to do things. At the end of the day, you come, I, I will show you the slide afterwards, that you come, uh, walkway, sanitation, water, how many percent you can all make it. But it, it, it doesn't determine before the people. We just, we just have the ceiling for the budget and let the people feel the content, okay? Let the people feel the content and decide their process. This is the way people will feel uh, they, they are having the power. But the power is not so much, which is important. If you give too much power to the people who don't have power, it tends to have a problem very quickly. So you have to, to, to go with the stages of development as well. Most of the city, we start the city-wide survey. This is the picture in Cambodia, <clears throat> where they made the survey in 20, 27 cities. And in Cambodia, about 15 to maybe 18 cities have the city-wide process. This is in Vietnam. It's not eight cities now. It's about 15 cities where they have the city-wide planning. This is in Mongolia. And I can keep the same picture, same map like this, for all the 19 countries, but we stop here, only the three countries. This should, to show you, this is the kind of small project where people start working together, sometimes water, sometimes street, and so on. This is just to show you the picture of what we call small project. Yeah? We provide a grant of $15,000 approximately for five projects. But here in Cambodia, it's always moved like nine, 10, 11 projects. And it's very really funny if you see some project is only $500. <laughs> some project is only $450. So in the $15,000, they discuss in the network and they divide according to the different needs. So they use the budget to ignite the community action. Doesn't matter, it's just $500. They do something and suddenly they wake up. And from waking up, they, they move on. Yeah? So it's not the amount of money which is important. It's the freedom in which they can use the money and they can determine what they would like to do, what they want to change, who would work in what, and how they would go forward about that. Yeah? That is important. Once people test the freedom, it would never stop. It will continue. Yeah. This is the project in Vietnam. A long, long street. They use only $3,000 because people contribute to that as well as the local authority. Uh, authority. So it means you have $3,000 as a negotiating tool to get the city, to get the community to come along the way. If we don't move, we don't have anything to go about. Yeah? 
But here the negotiations start and they achieve something. This is also in Philippines. People love to build street. You know why? Because street give them the link to the city. Huh? Street is something uh, a symbol, a symbol of the connection <laughs> to the main system. It's very really important like that. Apart from that, street can be a playground, can be uh, the the way they bring food to the market. You know the the access. Huh? Uh, is, is important, but more, more importantly, is a symbol of being legitimate yeah? and linked to, to the main system. So citywide small upgrading activity could be anything. You make a retaining wall, there is a very good invention to use the bamboo and make the bamboo bridge. Maybe you read about that also. Then from small project, people start negotiating for land. We found in so many countries that even they start the small project, they finish it, they can start negotiate for the land already. Yeah. Anyway, land is a big issue for all the slums because you are sitting on some only land. They, many of the city process, for the next step, they will go to housing. You see on the left-hand side, that is the housing process in Myanmar. Yeah, It's in Myanmar. Uh, Myanmar, the women start this housing process together and in Vietnam, in Fiji. <coughs> These are some of the housing projects that they negotiate with the government and they build their houses. And it's very funny because we are talking about 40,000 grant to support the city fund and the city fund give the loan to the, the first community, the pilot community. 40,000 mean what? You cannot build any toilet here would be how much? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's very little. You cannot build a, a small check here in, in London, no way. Yeah? <laughs> but in Asia, 40,000, we can probably build about 15 houses <coughs> to start with, or 20, or 30. In, in Cambodia, this is the first set. They start the first group. Start! That's the key word. 40,000 to make them the confidence to build a fund so they start the saving. The, the system of finance already start. And then we can keep loan to the first group. Give the first loan. Start the first group. Which is very little. But the mechanism is now open. Start. Yeah? So each city, you, you see the Vietnam up there, that's the row house in Vietnam. The loan is only about a thousand dollar, thousand dollar, and they add more money to that. So once it is open, the people will start thinking how I can complete, or how we can draw other uh, possible resources. The city may add into the fund and so on. The opening of this process initiate from the people and link up the people together and it become a visible fund of the people in the city together. That is important. Yeah. And the feeling that we have now our fund, available finance, which now going to be able to, to take care of uh, a lot of non-development uh, uh, situation that the poor have to face for so long, it's changing. Yeah. And we need to give little money, sorry to say, because we want it to be spread now. We want to ignite, we want the scale to happen as many cities as possible. So these are some of the housing projects. Here are the picture in the Philippines, in several cities where they plan together with the architect. I have the picture in which they finished the house already, but couldn't find it in two hours. <laughs> and this is in Nepal. Nepal have about 10 cities where they start the negotiation for land, searching for the land, and start some of the early project. You can see a very powerful picture of the community architect working with the community to plan the settlement. Yeah? This is in Mongolia. This is in Myanmar. In Myanmar, after the cyclone Nagris, we just give people the fund and let the people do the reconstruction and the improvement. 
and they've done it very well. It's more than 200 houses, yeah, who may receive only something like $200, $300. But it's the beginning of linking all these uh, 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 family who are affected by this aspect to come together. And they continue the development process right after that. A lot of dance, a lot of activities, liveliness, and many things, you know, and the saving activity actually start. And then they, the same group moved to the city in Yangon where they face eviction. And they start searching for the possible land, they identify it, and the community architect from Thailand is not, went there to help them do the planning. In the process of ACA, it's not just providing support, but in the system of providing support, we are trying to facilitate the system in which people are getting together as a network, which is the first political important uh, platform of people in the same city. And then the community network get together with the city, sit together with them, then their city development committee. So you will partnership with the authority, yeah? This is a way to cheat the political uh, disadvantage, the, the political unbalance. Once pe the poor people could sit with the city and talk to them, because you have numbers, yeah? And then little by little pe people will have more confidence to propose, to link many other possible activities. Then we have the National Joy Committee, because in one given country, you have so many cities. So it makes the vibration of that country uh, into a learning, sharing, exchange, and so on between cities. So some of the country, they set up the National Joint Committee. And this is something we want the impact to a policy change. Yeah? So from people action, 3,000 projects, 500 projects, you can see that picture. It is built into a national committee and the policy platform, yeah. Last year, we organized the Asia Pacific Urban Forum. We invite minister from many of these countries, yeah, to Thailand, and they have a workshop on citywide planning in the Thai government house, yeah. So we sort of check and stir and try to convince that this is possible and so on. So you can play with that layer stronger when the ground work is already happened in a big way by the people. In the development direction that we have to see today and in, the, in, in, in this very near future, we have to see the new politics of cooperation and building local partnership. It's no more the antagonistic uh, fight all the time that sometimes we have to be able to do. But in terms of making the things work, we have to see how the politics of cooperation between the people, the have and the have not, the power and the powerless, are able to build to this development process. So development process is not a welfare item, it's not a welfare activity that people don't have the dread. Give them the money so they fix the dread, finish. Development in our world is very technical, like that, sorry to say. But we have to see that if people build the drain, how the drain can build the community. How the drain can organize the community. How the drain can lead to many more activities. What could be the technique that one item lead to the other? And people are moving more into a structural development direction. And little by little, build into a network and a partnership platform. If we reach that platform, we, we are visible citizen, yeah? and we can propose, we can negotiate for more. Can our people work in that market? Can that, that area uh, uh, work it so that people can sell things over there? So income generation is not just a technical thing. It involves a change of power. If people have more power, you can have more space, more economic space in the society. Yeah? And that is very important. Yeah? So we develop men professional. We should not work only on the technical facade or technical direction only. 
we have to see how the technical uh, direction can lead into a structural change and can give power, fair power to the different parties involved in the process. And this is very powerful no? because politics only is very abstract. But development process can bring this political change much stronger and very practical yeah? and functional at the same time. Yeah? Uh, this is the picture of the assessment that we organize. After all this uh, lot of implementation in so many countries, we organize assessment process in which we have so many uh, participants from many countries visiting. Like in this case, they visit Philippines. They're coming from Thailand, from Cambodia, from Vietnam, and what else? Maybe from Nepal also. So they jointly see how the Philippines are doing, <coughs> have been doing. By seeing the other, by assessing the other, you are assess assessing yourself. So it becomes a process of mutual assessment. Yeah? It reflects on what they are doing, in what they are seeing. Yeah? So this is uh, more the learning, not only checking whether you are a good student or not, uh, whether you are right or wrong, you know? not only that. Yeah. So these are some of the pictures of the assessment trip, which is a little crazy, because in the Philippines, we have to stay in this city one day and go to another island another day by boat. <laughs> <laughs> So at the end of the ACCA program, about 70% of the budget go to the big project and the small project and for capacity building. All the administration is not more than 12%. Yeah? So money is in the hand of the people, mainly. Don't, don't look at the, the number because it's not the final one. I don't have the time to put it into the right figure until we, we finish it now. Uh, uh, this is the, the budget in the small project. You can see in the beginning, I would say this is in the beginning. Now the, the graph will not be like this. The budget from ACCA is only about half of the total budget. Yeah? <coughs> so another half have been mobilized from other sources. <coughs> now that the budget, especially in Laos, they give as a loan. It already come back. So they already start the second round and the third round of the project. Huh? for toilets, for whatever. And this is a messing gap. And it's something very important. You see the, the violet color. That is the budget from the government. Which means that this 40,000 that we already said to start up, just go ahead, start. This is the money to unlock a lot of resource, which is taking away from the people, okay? When people feel that they have the fund and it's possible for the housing project, they negotiate. And we found that many of them are able to negotiate for the land. Plum land, good land location. If you calculate the price of that land, it's so much. Which means that sometimes if we find a way that people process are moving, we can unlock a lot of resource, which is taking away from the people, back to the people. Yeah? And we don't need to pay for that. That's a very good thing about <laughs> We just give a little bit and then they try to get it. It's something the society should be responsible anyway, but they never been working up to that point. So in this way, when people feel confident, they have the network, they feel that they're able to do that, and they have the house plan and this and that, they negotiate for the land and they got it. And I believe that in many other places it's also workable this way. And very interestingly, same as Thailand, more than 50% can stay in the same place. You don't need to move anywhere. In Thailand, it's about 65 to 70%. The existing slum can stay in the same place. We don't need to relocate any, any Further away. So if we start the citywide planning, it means we start the negotiation for land from the existing position. Yeah? Most of the slum eviction become a serious problem because you try to find the solution after the eviction. 
It's too late. It's too late. You don't have the time to organize. Uh, the people already lost in the court case. <laughs> the project already alive with the claim, with the construction. Very really difficult. Yeah. But if we start the citywide survey and we start negotiating every slum land, huh? Right away. Do it now. Not do it after. You will get more than 50% in the same area. See? And you redevelop it. You upgrade. You change the form of it. Into a nice building. Easy, yeah? Now this is the small project. You can see that the money go to the road and street and brick, about 23%, rain net, about 17%, water supply, 70%, 17%. I, I think this is a very beautiful picture. We just provide the ceiling of small fund and the people build it, and you put into this category. It will tell a, 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 a realistic picture of the different needs of the community. And this is the picture of the city fund. Now we have more than 100 cities in Asia. <laughs> and we have the city development fund. City development fund link the community fund to work together and build the new system of finance. Huh? We need a system, new system of finance, which is more socially oriented. All the finance today is more commercial oriented. <coughs> yeah. Because there is no social finance in the society, that is why the social side of the society is not developing. Here is a new system of finance in which the poor are put together and we have community fund and start thinking how we build the welfare, how we can help each other and so on. It's a very important system of finance because finance by the government and by the private sector is not too much concentrate on this. But community on the ground, the socially organized system on the ground will concentrate on this more. And we need more money of this kind. Anyway, this is the social, uh, the, the city development fund which link and, and, and give a, a, a little more power to the community fund and the community level. And the community fund and the community level give a little more power to the family, to the household. So they know that they have a little backup of the fund, the saving group at the community level, which has the backup of the city level. If you have the national level, like in Cody, we, we actually don't in any way attempt to control them. And I think that's really very important because as planners and policy makers often uh, one of the, it's no accident, for example, that one of the favorite terms of planning is development control. Yeah? And yet this is the antithesis of that process. And I think it would be helpful, perhaps, I don't know about you, but from my point of view, I would like some soup just to say a little bit more about how these networks of communities grow and also, perhaps also to address the question of leadership in the community networks. Because it seems to me that's the, the basis. The, the community networks themselves and how they grow is the power behind the, the model. Um, but also, how does leadership uh, interact with that process? Hmm. Oh, actually, there are two points. Your first point on on the, uh, we don't own the development process. <laughs> Let me say a few words because uh, it's one of the major problems uh, when some development agency doing something or support something. We feel like this is our project, you know. You, you can hear that all the time. You can see very easily when there is the tsunami or disaster anywhere. You go to the area where there is very, it's bad calamities and so on. You haven't seen much development, especially in the earlier stage, but you will see a lot of banner. This is <laughs> care, this is this, 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 this. <laughs> banner. You know? Suddenly, it's a lot of honor of that development activity. It's, it's not necessarily, it's not your money. It's money that we receive from, from somewhere, and we're supposed to pass it to the people anyway. Huh? We should be so happy that they're the, one, they're the one who receive the money and they can do a lot of things which they feel so glad, so happy. 
uh, that they are the one who actually make change by themselves. <coughs> if we don't have that attitude and orientation, development is a very strange thing. If, if the people who support development tend to own the development process, yeah? And that kind of orientation is so important from day one, from the very beginning. That development owned by people on the ground, yeah? And we are just facilitators, we, we participate to what they're doing. The second point on the question of leadership, uh, we, leadership is important, but when we start any community organization, you can find that the structure in which the community organization or network operates is always similar to what exists in the society, yeah? which is a kind of a, a, a pyramid and the leader sit on the top and so on. Huh? We have to start with that because this is the only teacher <laughs> in the society. There's no other alternative system. But the key point is that how we can find a way that it becomes more flat. Yeah? More flat, more, more people. <coughs> in, in our process, our, my experience, we always uh, try to develop, like when, when, when I discussed about the social cluster, remember? So you have the subgroup. The subgroup already produce uh, their social constituency and representatives. The subgroup can challenge the, the, the main leader, huh? yeah, for instance. And then you have a different task force in the community. This is the saving group, this is the welfare group, this is the construction group, this is a different task force in order to open a, a different spaces yeah. for different expertise and for different kinds of leadership. You have different activities, saving women are very good. Yeah. Men are not very good at saving, men spending money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> women save money. So if you have that pyramid uh, community where the main leader control everything, including saving, you finish. <laughs> Corruption comes, <laughs> money to be misused and so on. No, you have to create a new space and let the women become stronger and stronger so they can challenge the power of men. <laughs> and that's very important. So this kind of thing, little by little, different activity, different task force, organization at the small level, link with organization at the bigger level, and you have the network of many kinds, network on the issue base, network on the area base, network on a certain area, the same canal have one network, uh, that uh, same landlord have another network. Many, many space open. With different space open, it would allow more uh, production. <laughs> of leaders. And the different leader can challenge or balance with the other leader. And in fact, this is a new democratic system. The democratic system doesn't mean that you have the super few leader who determine everything. It is a system where everybody can be the leader, isn't it? Everybody can be a leader. Some housewives are not good at any other thing, but they're good at cooking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there are different ability, hiding our uh, potential. We create the space and make it into a part of the after <coughs> process. But this is something that uh, one have to understand why we keep on doing the project. So project doesn't mean project alone. Activity doesn't mean activity alone. But activity is the way to open up uh, the opportunity for the community to manage things together to allow more new experienced person to be able to come into a process and could become the leaders. Activity is the way to open up the leader, new leaders. So it has that complex meaning which we have to understand. In this way everything can can lead to many many other answers in itself. Yeah. So I don't know whether the answer in two aspects. <laughs> Thank you. I, do, you to, do, hmm? do you want to follow up? Should we follow up with questions to this? Or? Um, or I was thinking you could each ask one and then do it. 
All right, so we, we each ask one and then yeah. we'll come to the... How many of you thought when Song Sook started that this is pretty simplistic? Because it sounds very simplistic. Of let, <coughs> let the people drive the process. And the stunning thing is I've been hearing Song Sook now for nearly 30 years say something that seems very simplistic. And then she explains and it's actually incredibly profound and incredibly effective. When I first heard of an idea of allowing only $3,000 to community organizations, you thought, you can't do anything with $3,000. $3,000 buys you two days time for an international consultant. They charge $1,500 a day. And then you got the evidence from 950 projects and all the other things that go along with it. And I watched that, how much development assistance is accountable to low-income groups? How much development assistance is accountable to low-income groups? Almost none. Almost none. Here for the first time is funding put in the hands of grassroots organizations with no strings. An insufficiency of funds, which then encourages them to get resources from other places, leverage other things. 165 cities in 19 nations. If the World Bank was designing a program for 165 cities in 19 nations, it would cost $800 million, $900 million. They couldn't conceive of doing something as simple and as direct as this. Who else is doing this? Almost no one. Look at the bilateral aid agencies. Most of them spend nothing on housing, nothing on upgrading, nothing on community development. Look at the innovation. In, in, in the assessment, there was this lovely comment. You know, if you're an academic, you get assessed by your peers. If I write a paper, it gets sent to my peers, other academics like me. But community organizations always get evaluators that have never lived in a squatter settlement, have never been poor, have never been hungry, and don't actually speak the local language. So what do they do in Accra? They allow community organizations to be judged by their peers, other community organizations. So what you see in these processes in Cody, in Accra, is a constant process of innovation as low-income groups and their grassroots organizations are allowed to innovate, possibly for the first time where aid is actually accountable to them, directed by them, chosen by them. So my question to Sumsuk is, how on earth are you going to sustain this? Because the main donor for this, um, the Gates Foundation, which with enormous um, bravery funded this, has decided not to fund it because they're going to concentrate on technological options and bed nets. So Sumsuk, how are you going to sustain this amazing and remarkable process that is probably driving more political change than any other $10 million contribution? Well, we will go for two more years. <laughs> anyway, and we hope to reach about 250 cities. Yeah? We will start uh, uh, and uh, in continue our expansion, yeah? stir the things and so on. I think the development uh, uh, program like this is not going to be uh, sustained in itself anyway. It will come the time that we may end or we may have to, to, to do some other things related to this or not related to this. But one thing which is very important in this case is that the, the, the city is sustained. Yeah? And that's very important. It's not you who sustain. Huh? Uh, most uh, development agency will fare the increase was the item <laughs> and in one of the board meetings oh, talk about the increase of salary <laughs> like that you know uh, the welfare the income the uh, such and such and it's thicker and thicker you know? and sometimes we 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 forget the task because so to be survived is become more a priority than the work on the ground. So we have to, to be ready to close the job or change the way we are doing things and so on. But in the city itself, where people
still need a change, and they own the change. You remember the diagram, the last one, the, the chart showing about 100 cities already have the city fund. Yeah? They have the platform of partnerships and so on. They're moving, and they will continue. If we have more money, that's very good because we will add more power to that. Yeah? Now you have second project, third project. You move faster. But if, if we don't have additional support, then they will have to go in their own pace. But once they start up to this point, I think mechanism uh, will continue. Thank you. Very nice point. So let's open up to the, the floor, and we can come back if you have more. Shall I walk the mic around? <laughs> I I stand up, I <laughs> so, who'd like to uh, throw us some questions? Um, one, and then two, and three. Um, do you have any projects in Africa as well? Or you? Asian, this is Asian. Uh, but do you, like, you intend to have any projects in Africa as well? In future? Well, if they invite, you know. <laughs> But uh, I, I have a, a, a close uh, collaboration with the SDI who work in Africa anyway, yeah? But Africa has its particular context. Uh, it's challenging if we can, can help, yeah? But for the time being, it's already 19 countries. There's a lot of work to do. <laughs> Given that Asia is going to be the most highly, have the most highest levels of overpopulation in the future, so we need to see it in that context. So Suk represents the Asian coalition of housing rights. So, but of course, there is learning in Africa with other groups. And if uh, some of you are working in Africa and you think it would be good to collaborate, we'd be very, very happy. We open for that. Yeah? I think it's going to work in Africa also. Some of my friends said, no, it's not going to work in Africa. It's more complex, it's more difficult. Truly, every country has its own complexity, no? <coughs> I think it's going to work. I was in Kenya before. So they went to the community. You see, their community is just like gold mine for me. No? They don't have water, they don't have this, they don't have that, and so this organized, and oh my goodness, you can use any intervention yeah? <laughs> to start up. Yeah. It's possible, no, no problem with that. And, and just answer to David's point before that why a, such a small amount of money, uh, it, it works. It has to be a small amount of money. Mm -hmm. And there were people, the uh, high level friend who read the proposal in the beginning said, 3,000, what are you going to do with that? Why don't you increase at least 10,000 or 20,000 for the small project? I told, I told him that if you make 10,000 or 20,000 for small project, all the government and the people who know big money would take it. Yeah? So you have to make it small, easy, and you know that this is insufficient. So we have the insufficient theory that this money is too little, then, but it's good enough to start something. Insufficiency means you allow the space to grow, to collaborate, to make other people work uh, with you or leverage other sleeping resource huh, or assistant, which has never come along this way. So now you, you move, then you make it work. So insufficient is very important. If you make it sufficient, then nobody will be interested to collaborate with anybody. So you have a lot of island, which is no collaboration with each other. Huh? Um, just to follow up on um, Karen's question about the leadership and also um, the complicated process in the uh, participatory planning. Um, we are talking about the horizontal um, approach and the vertical approach. And it seems that um, there is an effectiveness that the vertical approach wouldn't achieve in terms of comparing to the horizontal um, approach in terms of people's satisfactory and whether they are really benefited from the process. But also I'm thinking, um, the word participatory might in covers a lot of conflicts as well. And although there's effectiveness in it, but I'm worried about efficiency 
in terms of the horizontal approach. Because um, any community, they are made of, of any uh, different households. So um, what, whether they would have their interest, the conflict of how they want their community to develop. Have you ever encountered um, conflicts like this? And will they affect um, the efficiency of such horizontal approach? Mm -hmm. So that, that's one part. And also to reflect on, um, on the thing of a solution and attitude. If such efficiency is not high, will this actually be um, a solution rather than atti or attitude rather than solution? Because we are talking about development and we want to see the achievement of such development. So. I, I couldn't get the second question very clearly. Oh, the second is probably not a real question, just a thought. Oh, just a thought of um, uh, uh, the efficiency, how it will affect the outcome of such particip uh, participatory planning uh, method in terms of whether it's just attitude that require everybody to involve into it, or whether it's real, it, it's a real feasible approach to really improve everybody's life. Right. Okay, the first part, definitely horizontal or participatory process is a mess. Okay? <laughs> Never been easy. Because you have different group, different opinion, and somebody who don't do anything but have a lot of opinion all the time. <laughs> somebody selfish, somebody uh, agree, everything. You know, that makes uh, complex, yeah? Uh, that complexity is a reality. Now, if they have to live together, if they have to uh, to be in some communal setting, whatever, uh, if we spend the time for that uh, difficult process in the beginning, you know, little by little, little by little, uh, I found that it's no project which is not possible. It's possible, but it may not get 100%, okay? Maybe another 10% is very well, difficult. You know? But if we let the people uh, grow in the process of discussion and dialogue and understand the how, the why, and they're clearer what they want, and they have to balance what one thing with the others and so on. In this complicated process, is the way to build a com common society in which everybody has the opportunity to grow, to understand the reason why. Yeah? Now, if we, we feel this is going to spend a lot of time and need uh, certain understanding two way, you know, like that, uh, it's too complicated, then we use too much the vertical which has happened in some of the society. Then people become the recipient. They don't know the reason, whatever. You, nev you can never say that it's fair for everybody. Yeah? And the system determined by some, some people outside who have power, like God. You know? <laughs> but it's not. And it's all, always uh, going to be corruption or the way in which people have been uh, moved from one place because it's very important that this has to go to that and you must go to that and you have to live like that, <coughs> you know. In, in our changing society, which is more and more, it will move into a democratic society, more open society, I think it is better that we have to develop a system in which People are growing, people, everybody can, can be more equal, can be more understanding, can be more, more mature, and can be, become a very reasonable, good people. If we believe in people, there are always a, 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 a way and possibility to, to go into that. Only we are not very able, when professionals are not very able, huh? Uh, or, or the system are not very able. Yeah. Oh, it's too complicated. Let's do it this way, you know? Because we are not able. <laughs> if we are able, it means we, we allow the power 
from every group to come to chair. It, it, it may not necessarily to be everybody. We need, ever we, we need to have a tactful way. Okay, this group together, this group together. Uh, maybe if we're going to be in a housing project, who like to stay with who? So each group, five, six people, five, six people, five, six people. Five, six people, you agree on one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You put together, yeah? So we balance the, the, the unreason, unreasonable, unreasonable needs of this group with the other group, for instance, you know? There are ways to deal with that. And it may not be that complicated if we understand the technique, how to do that. And this is very much what the professional training is supposed to be. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation. I have a short uh, question. I wonder uh, how, how can we uh, deal with uh, the conflicts, radical conflict in the communi community, especially in the context of Thailand, uh, especially the conflict based on the, the different political view. Different color. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> well, easy to answer. Uh, for people in the community, they don't have that crazy conflict too much. A little here and there. But they always talk to each other. The conflict has been stimulated by the force from outside, yeah, for their gain, for their political gain, political objective, whatever. And they use the people on the ground huh? uh, to work for them. Yeah, I think many people know that. Uh, there's some conflict, yes, but the, as long as the outside political actor are not into. Inter interfere or coming to to make things worse in the community too much. You leave the community to deal with that because they live together. There are ways to deal with that. It's not that bad as the external conflict. I remember uh, on your map there is a big open space in China. So probably two points of the cities you have China. I think is there my question is there a particular reason. Uh, for you to open the space in China, or there's particular difficulty in China. Is there difficulty um, for you to expand oh, your project? China, yeah. yes. Yeah. <laughs> Big story. <laughs> That's your question. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I was just wondering if you could uh, give us a little bit more. Um, uh, information about the kind of administrative role that, that you as an organisation play, because I think you talked a lot about the simplicity of it and the way that it's driven by local people, but uh, it strikes me that there's a, a gap between sort of having an idea and then coming to a town in Nepal from, uh, so, so how, how is that actually, what is that process? Um, uh, Second, within that, you talk, talked about fac facilitators, and so that, that there is obviously a, a shaping role, although although it's it's stepped back a bit. There is some degree of shaping. You know, how how does that finance work? So you're giving money to um, an organisation. Uh, uh, how do you how do you find that organisation? What what's the the kind of parameters that are given? Um, and thirdly, is it is it always a loan or is it a grant? Because I'm not quite clear as to whether it is one or the other. Is it a loan given by this the kind of um, SDI type uh, wider organisation, or is it um, yeah, or is it a grant? I wasn't quite clear on that finance. It might be good to, to ask people who have similar questions. Yeah. Yeah. Right. This thing you have said, of course, is a good question. It's a question regarding uh, the organic uh, sustainability. How well is the uh, debt being repaid? Could it grow, or does it need continual injection of additional funding? Not that, not that necessarily it should have always be profitable, but it would be very interesting if it was, and then you wouldn't have to worry about Gates Foundation or 
World Bank or anyone like that. Okay, China. China has a very particular yeah. way, which is not very easy. Fine, different way. We support groups in Tibet yeah. to rebuild uh, the house and uh, the area where they have disaster. Yeah, close to to Tibet or <coughs> in the close by area. Uh, so they can reconstruct uh, the house according to the cultural uh, design, yeah? Because the, after the disaster, it's very dangerous. The <laughs> Chinese government come with the contractor, yeah? That's an earthquake you're talking about. Earthquake, yeah. disaster earthquake, right? They came with a contractor and they want to build, you know, very industrialized, simple type <coughs> house. So there are groups who are trying to show the alternative housing according to the culture of the area and so on. So, so we, we support some of that. But otherwise, in other areas, it is not very easy. We used to visit some Hutong in Beijing uh, to see whether how can we preserve the old Hutong. Yeah? Uh, because this is a thousand, more than a thousand years, yeah? this whole design and so on. Uh, it's very difficult now because most of the people who live in that uh, is a kind of a communal, is a cluster house. They all want to sell it because it's very, very expensive. Yeah? Even to do the upgrading is not working. So it's sort of a, a society which faced a big, big transformation in China. And the change of value is so much, so fast that to what you can do is offer some alternative a little bit, yeah. But it's a society that doesn't uh, care for any assistance much, yeah. Anyway, I cannot simply save any activity, yeah. But they may not have the citywide information. So you develop into a citywide information, and you link that scatter saving group into a city fund, for instance. So it just move a little from uh, many of the group who already do some work on the cloud. And in some way we can say that we use the ACA program to intervene the change in the way they have been doing their business or their work on the cloud into another level. It's a more structural level, it's a more scale level. So you, you help them broaden, strengthen, widen that process. We have people, we know people, Philippines, this and that, and so on. It's, it's been a process that a uh, key actor has, has been identified. Yeah? You cannot just go and get anybody you don't know. That's very dangerous. Yeah? So there are actors. There are community process that already exist in so many countries, so many cities. Once they start in the, in the area, they know very well. Yeah? They start the process. We pass the fund to them. Okay. We pass the funding to them. They develop, and now they have more confidence. They expand by themselves. And this is the reason why we, we, we think it's very important to have a national committee so that they can compare uh, the projects and they can learn from each other and it can be a transparent process by the other. We have the ACA committee at the regional level. Any project that submit would have to be known by so many other countries. It's the same process as in the Thai Baman Kong. In the Thai Baman Kong, when people have the project, they would have the city committee comprised of the network representative, the professor from university, the city authority, and some other. So they sit together. So their project have to be present in front of so many actors. Yeah. It's very difficult to, to tell uh, something which is not true or whatever. Once they, they agree, they would go to another level, maybe the regional level and the national level. Same thing. So it means that the project is sort of open to so many actors. Yeah? Their way of doing, their method, their finance, whatever. And once you approve, it will come down to the project. So the project is known by so many people. So you use this system to let the management in the eyes of so many people. Yeah. 
and because you have the network which have a regular visit, regular meeting, and so on, that kind of mechanism would help facilitate the process and the report and so on. What, Oh, it's, it's a loan and a grant. Actually, it doesn't matter much whether it's a loan or a grant, but a, we, we let the community decide whether it's going to be a loan or a grant. The, the, the money come from SHR to, to that city. So people in that city have to discuss. Yeah. Sometimes it's a grant, sometimes it's a loan. The more mature process, would have a tendency to make it alone. You know why? Because you have many communities. If you give a grant, you, you cannot give to everybody anyway. So they prefer to make it a revolving fund. And the revolving fund will give a loan to the needy one in the beginning. You repay, and once you repay, you give it to another one. <coughs> all the Philippine group are all revolving fund. Small project, big project. Laos are all small uh, uh, loans. Uh, revolving fund loan, yeah. Uh, Cambodia, they give a grant because they use a grant as the way to boost all the very scattered community to bring them into a process. So different technique, and this is uh, something that the, the the different group in different country are, are happy about because you give them the freedom, and then after some time, you let them present to each other. You see the regional assessment, huh? and then in our meeting. And, and, and this kind of point, why you give a grant, why you give as a loan? You know, it's regularly discussed. And we respect after all this discussion, it's a learning. You have advantage in some way, you have disadvantage in some way, yeah? And I think this is something very, very interesting. And we never impose them. Except we tell them, if you give a loan, <coughs> then it will be very slow. The poor will have difficulty. Yeah? In the Philippines, even water supply, you have to pay for the meter, you have to pay for everything, which is too much. Yeah? It's not necessary. I'm, I'm the one who said, why not give as a grant? <coughs> they said, if you give as a grant, you can never give to everybody. And everybody wants a free thing. No. So you have to... <laughs> yeah. So we're learning also. Okay, thank you. I think we have time for a couple more questions, and then I might ask uh, Karen and David just to give a you know, 30 second one minute. You negotiate with Cassidy, not with me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, uh, question here, and then we have one, one, two, three, and then. Thank you. Um, it's uh, quite remarkable that um, people are actually um, able to save some money um, towards the improvement. So I just wanted to, to ask you if um, you can give me a clarification on that sort of um, saving groups, how they work. If um, obviously there are different levels of income within a same community or same saving group, um, but um, and different needs. So if you can explain a little bit more on that, if everyone has to um, contribute with the same amount of money or how, how it works specifically. We didn't have to ask the people, but you want uh, the question? I think we'll take all the, yeah, all the questions. Next one? So the next one. Next one here. And one right beside me. Yeah, I'm just curious about, uh, are there any follow-up or additional research or profile of the reason that you had a project in that area? Or, and, do you know about the current situation of uh, about the communities or reasons that you or your organization had a project? Approximately, yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. See, see why why we need to know why we need uh, to know too much. Yeah. Uh, understandably, yeah. We should know. We should have a way to follow up. Each country has their way of follow up. Each city has their way of follow-up. But it's not a follow-up by, uh, by vertical, professional uh, check-up like that. Yeah? 
actually we were planning before and we not we not reaching that and I'm really sorry for that. <laughs> we were planning for the the regional report on the situation of their citywide upgrading from every city. I would be very happy if any people in DPU hope to do this work. We will find a budget for you, okay? Uh, because now they have the mechanism, they have the information, they start the upgrading. We really want to know uh, what, what is the progress of their citywide attempt. Uh, are there still poor people living somewhere? Or uh, what are the uh, uh, development of finance? What are the development of uh, this and that and so on? But the key issue is that it has to be done by them as much as possible. But we need to help them in, in, in set up some kind of a system which they feel it is useful to them and link it together into a country report and a regional report which is uh, which based on fact uh, monitored by the people on the ground. Yeah? And it is a good country and regional report an alternative report, which is not the UN report, which we don't know really they work from what, you know? <laughs> Here, you, every city you assess your situation, what changed? You only have to develop a set of indicators or something, you know? In some way, like building tools for them, huh? And this tool can be comp compared with the other city. You put together, you have the real report of how the some situation in the city and in the country are moving. If other cities are not developed, you should develop also. We give them some budget to, do, do, to develop. This is something we are uh, trying to do, but we are not achieving this point. And it's, it's a pity in, in terms of the uh, professional uh, analysis and uh, regular report that we should have done. We, we, we are not reaching that point. So I just would like to open for the institution or people who are interested. <coughs> because we have all the cloud work, we have all these mechanisms who are ready to do the work. We only have to, we only need the tools and the, the system to follow them. The saving, oh, saving. Well, different countries doing different way of saving. Yeah. Uh, the 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 more organized one always start with monthly saving. You have to save this and that. This is the saving which always adopted by men. <laughs> men always start by a system. Every Friday, this. How many? How much? Everybody have to come. Da, 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 and then, you know, this is. And when I hear, I know this is the men's system. <laughs> no, no, it's a good quality of men that uh, <laughs> clear system, order, and you know, women will be more flexible. For, for instance, women will save uh, daily sometimes. Is it? If you want to repair the, the, the housing repayment, you say you have to repay 500 baht a month. Many of the slum developers said, no, we don't have 500 baht a month. We never have 500 baht in our pocket. But how about you save 20 baht per day? Oh, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> but 20 baht per day, for per month you have already 600. This is possible. Uh, and women will not have a difficulty, you know, go to every house and, uh, you, oh, God, why do you need that much loan? Yeah. They will help how to, to be reasonable with that, for instance. Yeah. So, so there are different ways uh, of saving that already developed in, in many countries. Some save per month uh, by monthly, which is not very necessary. Uh, they, the young system always like that, and the, the good saving is a more flexible saving. And they don't care much, uh, daily or maybe two days or something like that. 